bad there. Okay, I guess we are. What you see in New York, that was. Let's wait for him to give us so. give us a sign. Usually he gives us a sign that we on. I guess. Oh, okay. Count to ten and you're gonna be live. All right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's going on, family? This is your host, brother Ben Ra. Thank you for tuning in to Keeping It 100. Listen, happy 2020 to everybody. This is our premiere uh, for 2020. We didn't get a chance to do our first show, but I'm happy to say that I'm glad we're back. And today we're going to talk about the importance of having Kwanzaa, the seven principles of Kwanzaa in our lives and how that could better our lives uh, individually and collectively okay these principles I believe are very important to us as a people uh, the way we the, the I, I watched the uh, Malcolm X documentary mm -hmm. of uh, who uh, who shot Malcolm X or the murder of Malcolm X that, that came on um, Netflix. on Netflix mm -hmm. and it annoyed me to see that where we were then is kind of sort of where we are right now as a people. You know, jealousy, envy, all of these things that tear up the main thing that we need in order to move forward, which is unity. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I started looking over the Nguza Saba once again. And I want us to start with the, first of all, I want us to start with Kwanzaa and where it originated from. But first, I want everybody around the table to introduce yourself, you know, before we get into it. Brother Bradley. Makaru Bradley, representing African Liberation Media and the Makaru Speaks blog spot. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Aurora, Aurora X, um, representing Blue Magic Entertainment and yes, the Necessities Company. Yes, ma'am. Marifa Okwaley, representing League of Intelligence. Shout out to everybody out there. Let's work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to start with the origin of Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. So, Brother Bradley, can you just give us uh, some information on the origin of Kwanzaa, how it came about? Yes. I appreciate uh, Brother Ben uh, for the invitation to come in and, and speak. Uh, this evening and yes, sir, share the uh, podium with these uh, outstanding brothers and sisters. Yes, Respect. yes. Uh, we have to go back to uh, the turbulent year of 1965. Of course, in February, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Babo Mawali, Malcolm X was assassinated by enemies of African people. Mm -hmm. Then in March, uh, there was the uh, brutal and bloody beating that African people suffered on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. Yes. But the, the main event uh, that actually led to the founding of the US organization and the release or introduction of the Nguza Saba was the Watts Rebellion that yes. took place in August of 1965. 65, right. Now, there, there was a singular act of police brutality, uh, just like, you know, we saw, you know, here in Charlotte and we've seen in other cities, you know, Michael Brown Jr. and Tamir Rice and mm -hmm. Sandra Bland and all the others. Yes. But preceding uh, that particular event uh, in that, that August, uh, there had been over 60 people of African descent killed mm -hmm. by the Los Angeles Police Department, including over 20 who had been shot in the back and only one police officer had been charged. Mm -hmm. So this was, uh, you know, the, the tension was building in the uh, South Central Los Angeles community. And uh, when a, uh, two brothers were attacked, uh, were stopped, and their mother uh, went to 
asked some questions and she was attacked, the community exploded. Yes. And uh, that led to uh, one of the uh, most massive uh, urban rebellions that we've seen in this country. Right. In September, Dr. Marlana Karinga called a group of people together and they formed an organization named Us. And they took what I, what most people would think was probably a, a very unusual response to a rebellion. Uh, they put forth the position that the key crisis in challenging black life was a cultural crisis, a crisis and a challenge in the area of views and values, what we think and how we act. And they argued that until we break the monopoly that our oppressors have on our minds, our liberation from the tyranny that we were suffering from the white supremacy dynamic right. was not only unachievable, it was unthinkable. Yes. To help facilitate uh, this process, uh, they call for a cultural revolution, and a cultural revolution has to be based on certain ideas. So Dr. Karinga released uh, what he called the black value system, yes. uh, the seven principles yes. mm -hmm. uh, that, that we now call the Nguza Saba, Omoja Kuja Chakalia, Ujima Ujima, Nia, uh, Kumba, and uh, Imani. Yes. Okay, so that was in September of 1965. So this September will actually be the 55th anniversary of the of the release of uh, the introduction of the Nguza Saba. Right. The following December, uh, the members of the uh, of the US organization came together and held the first Kwanzaa. Right. During the course of that year, uh, pre uh, after he released the Nguza Saba, they began to uh, develop this holiday. And the idea of the holiday was that uh, it would serve as a vehicle uh, to uh, not only uh, celebrate uh, the African family, African culture, our, right. our history, and our community, right. but it would serve as a vehicle by which the Nguza Saba would be de uh, disseminated and practiced. Because based on the conditions that we were facing, uh, that you know, during the second cycle of white supremacy in mm -hmm. the United States, American apartheid, and uh, all of its um, accompanying barbarism. You know, we needed to organize for power, mm -hmm. right. and culture is one of one of the areas of power, yes. along with politics, economics, uh, education, communications. You know, things that we're doing here today, mm -hmm. and uh, that that was their response. Yeah. So that's why uh, that's why it was started. It started as 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 a response to the oppression that we were dealing with, and they put forth the position that. We have to focus on culture first. We have right. to focus on culture first. But but it but it had to be culture. He 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 developed a, a theory called Kawaida, mm -hmm. and Kawaida is is a theory of tradition and reason, but it's informed by practice because yes. if, because if you're not practicing these things, mm -hmm. they don't they don't Doesn't mean anything. Mean right. But you know that's a quick overview of mm -hmm. how you know Kwanzaa and the Nguza Saba, Saba came Kwanzaa. about. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. What we're going to start with is we're going to start with Umoja, of course, unity. And unity is to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and the race. My brother, can, can, can we elaborate on that? I will start off by saying, and I'm echoing Brother Wisdom on yes. this, that Umoja is probably the hardest principle to achieve. Absolutely. There's so many different factors. Let's factor in how we've been conditioned and socialized in this particular country right. to deal with each other. And Elder Bradley, if I'm not mistaken, it was Dr. Neely Fuller who was talking about when we get together, and it, sh it should be limited, just kind of based on our current mindset and our colonized minds and different things like that. So it's difficult for us to remain together for yes. a long period of time. And just to kind of go back to it, like unit, it's, it's a difficult thing to achieve, it's, but it's necessary for all the other principles to, to manifest, have to unify first. I think there's been some discrepancy on what unity looks like, what that means, um, and I think according to the Nguza Saba, it's talking about solidarity to start with. Absolutely. Being unified on similar principles and values. Elder Bradley just mentioned the cultural revolution. So this is a culture switch. Right. And so to get on the same page culturally, to me, is at least a start Right. Uh, when it comes to manifesting Umoja, and then he goes into more details right. as he breaks it down um, within the family, Good. Um, within the, the generations, young and old, right. um, within your community, community. Right. and then of course with the nation and the global global right. family. So there's right. a lot of areas. I'll start off just by saying it's the most difficult thing to do 
is for black people, melanated people in the United States and Western countries to come together based on our socialization. Mm -hmm. My sister. And I would definitely have to agree. Um, I think there is nothing else uh, that we can do before that. Right. Um, I think that unity plays a huge part in it, um, but, I, but I'm more of a tackling the roots type of person. Yeah. Um, unity to me is um, part of the trees and the branches. You know, I'm, I, I believe the roots will be self-love. Mm. Yes. And without self-love, we can't have unity. We can't right. have any principle of, it, of Kwanzaa across the board. Right. Right, and, and that's crazy because I, I was practically thinking about the same thing as far as self-love. Because mm -hmm. without that, if you don't love you, you can't love nobody else. That's a fact. Not, not in the fashion in which we're talking about here. That's a fact. And uh, in, in order for you to have unity, that's one of the things that is contained in that, is self-love. Absolutely. What, what do you think that... What do you think is the issue why we can't have unity? I mean, mm -hmm. if you'd like to start with that. Again, I would have to go back to self-love. Is that one? Is that the only thing? I, I believe that that is the root of okay. all of our problems. Okay. Um, I say this a lot because mm -hmm. I honestly feel that this is what would take to begin that healing process. Mm -hmm. um, I love myself. Yes. Unbelievable. I can look at myself mm -hmm. in the mirror every day and say I love myself. Right. So in turn, I can look at my brothers right. and I can look at my sisters and you are of me. We are all direct descendants of God. So right. I love you as well. I so think, I can yeah. unite with you. Yes. I can build with you. Yes. I can love you. I can do all these things with you. Yes. But if I don't love myself, and then I look at you, mm -hmm. and you are the direct reflection of me. Yes. I hate you too. Right. You know, I don't want to build with you. I don't want to unite with you. I want to put guns to your head. I want to sell you drugs to kill you off. I want to destroy you because in turn, I'm, you look like, you know, you right. direct reflection of me. So yes. I want to destroy myself. Right. So I want to destroy everything that looks right. like me. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot, a lot of that self-destruction and hatred... A lot of that comes from slavery, of course. We know that. Um, and see, that's, that's why mm -hmm. that's why Dr. Karinga said you have to start with the Cultural Revolution. See, mm -hmm. right. and he's, you know, the first thing they said was that until we break the monopoly that our oppressors have on our mind. So, yes. you know, what had, you know, what are some of the manifestations of that monopoly? Well, self hatred is certainly one of those uh, manifestations. Absolutely. You know, the, the lack of originality, the lack of uh, uh, the ability to organize mm -hmm. so so that's that's why I started with that but but what I will say is this mm -hmm. it, you know in in having this discussion it's important that that we look at the principles as a complete system yes because he he's, he called it a black value system yes. so the the uh, the analogy that I always give people mm -hmm. is that uh, rather than trying to look at them in, in, in isolated as isolated uh, entities mm -hmm. in which we, we, we can discuss each one of them. That's right. But we, we have to just keep in mind it's just it's like the body, for example. Right. Uh, the body is composed of several systems. You take any one of those systems, the right. digestive system, the circulatory system, the muscular system. Right. You take any one of those systems out of the body, the body doesn't work. That's right. And so the Nguza Saba doesn't work unless all of the principles are inextricably uh, linked. Absolutely. But there's a yes. reason he started with with emoji and right. you know so I mean obviously uh, he does they, they're not meant to be ranked but there's a reason he started with it and I think it probably goes back to his study of Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. you know Garvey said his priorities were God family nation and race right. and so when you look at Karinga what does he say family community Gee, nation and race, and race right. so that's almost mirroring exactly what Garvey said right. uh, he just left you know the religious the, the religious piece out of it right. but what I will say is that um, there have been numerous examples where we have had unity mm -hmm. in 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 our community right. and the, 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 the concept we, what we have to understand is that you don't have to have 
a lot of people in order to move masses of people. True, correct. All, all you need is what in science they call is a critical mass. Right. If you can create a critical mass, then no, then a number of other people will buy into your vision and then move and then move into action. But I think one one of the keys, the the the, the last great mass movement that we had mm -hmm. was of course the movement for civil rights and human rights which right. then led to black power and black liberation right. which forced the United States government to launch a war on us mm -hmm. we had strong black families yes see the w without strong black families right. there is no civil rights movement I'm, right. I'm talking about the grassroots unsung heroes of the deep south okay right. We we know about Dr. King and and all of the others. All, all of the others. But <laughs> but 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 without without the grassroots people of the Deep South, the right. people who risked everything, right. who invested the most, and when you travel through the areas where they live today, mm -hmm. benefited the least. But but they but they but they bought into the idea that we are human beings, right. Muntu. That's right. We're human beings, and we 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 don't we have a right. Yes. To exist as human beings, to live as human beings, mm -hmm. and, and and not to be uh, controlled and oppressed and lynched, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So people risked everything. So the, the the unity that was in our families allowed mm -hmm. that to happen. Now, right. what has happened to us in the last 40, 45 years? Our oppressors attacked the family structure in our community, mm -hmm. and I think they did this. They did that for a reason. The young black people who were born in the 1940s, mm -hmm. the uh, Stokely Carmichael's, H. Rap Brown's, Angela Davis's, Huey Newton's, Fred Hampton's, they scared the crap out of the white power structure of this country. Right. When they rose up in the 60s and they just started with, okay, well, we're just going to start with something basic, just mm -hmm. sitting at a lunch counter, mm -hmm. and then one thing leads to another, right? Just like, uh, for example, Khufu couldn't build the Great Pyramid if Imhotep hadn't, hadn't built the Step Pyramid. Right. Yes. you got to go through the process. Right. And so lunch counters led to Black Power, the Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. the Nguza Saba. All of that was part of that process. Right. But, when, but when the power structure saw these young people, they said, okay, all right, we'll pass a bill. We'll give y'all civil rights. We'll give y'all voting rights. Mm -hmm. And when they started saying, we want black power, they said, oh, my goodness, these, these people are out of control. We mm -hmm. got to do something because if, that gen if the generation that rose up in the 1940s reached this conclusion in the 1960s, what's going to happen, happen to the people that are being born in the That's 50s, right. the 60s, right. the 70s, and yeah, 80s? Exactly. Right. So, we got, we, so, so, so what, what do we do? We attack that mm -hmm. structure that produced those mm -hmm. and you know they went they went through several means to do it but I would say that as difficult as it is mm -hmm. and I would agree it's very difficult mm -hmm. it starts with something that we can't control right we can't control putting our families back together yes we can if the young the young black males and young black females who are reproducing children mm -hmm. would decide to build families then we would at least be moving in, in that direction. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that's a whole different thing, you know, to deal with, I mean, mm -hmm. because of, you know, all of the uh, images that come across Ab and, and, you know, the mindset that this, uh, this system uh, wants us to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it's doable if we, if we start with the basics. I, I think that education plays a major, major key in us unifying. Mm -hmm. Because we have to, first of all, we have to know ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, That's in why order he does to love, right? In order, yeah. yeah, right. In order to love mm -hmm. ourselves, we have to know ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we don't know ourselves, then we don't know how to love mm -hmm. one another. Right. You understand? Yeah, so agree. that that breeds a lot of self hatred. One of the things that I agree with, um, uh, what's what's the brother um, with the beard? Oh, I always forget this brother's name. Um, but anyway, he tried to uh, get people to invest in him building a school. Oh, Umar. Umar Johnson. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I always say is that it took generations for the white man to condition us the way he has. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take generations again 
for us to undo the programming that he's done. That's right. You understand? And uh, one of the ways is by creating our own curriculum, not following in the in the same curriculum that this man has, you know, continued to set up for us, and then we in turn build a black school and we try to follow to a to the to a degree what he's doing. Right. Hmm? We gotta change the entire scene. Mm -hmm. right. Brother Murphy, talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's dropping jewels. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you're talking about knowledge itself. Rose yeah. was talking about uh, uh, loving herself. Yes. And Elder Brown is talking about the family the structure. Family structure the, right. the most important institution. Yes. And I think when you mentioned education, I'm going to go, it goes both ways. Yes. And that's, they use education. I, I don't know who it was, Elder Bradley, who said that uh, lynching starts in the classroom. So I'm not sure who said that, but that I think that's an absolute 100% fact. Right. So the education that we get, um, I think it's Carter G. Woodson talking about the miseducation of the Negro, mm -hmm. sets us on a path to where we don't love ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when you don't love yourself, Dr. Amos Wilson talks about black on black violence. Yes. All these things can now uproot, or excuse me, can, can grow out of you. Yes. Because you don't have that foundation. Right. And education, like you're saying, the kind of curriculum that they have, mm -hmm. takes us down a different path that distorts us. We have our identity falsified. Yes. They omit the key things that we need, key ingredients that we need in education to grow up correctly, to have a knowledge of self, yes. to understand ourselves as Muntu and all the other African principles that we have. We don't get access to any of this information. Right. Like, of course, we all know the first time they introduce us is slave time. Mm -hmm. You know, ta-da, you were the slave of the white man. And this is your identity. It starts from right here. Right. This is your foundation. That's right. And then, like, you started out, Aurora, you were talking about how you loved yourself. I didn't start like that. I right. didn't start with a love and appreciation of, of myself. I didn't start right. out with self-respect. I didn't start out like that. I right. started out confused about my identity. I started out not understanding why black people were in one position and these other people who I see on a daily basis don't seem to be superior in my eyes. Right. But for some reason, they're responsible for all these different things, right. um, achievements and advancing human civilization. And I'm looking at us and I'm like, it can't be that we didn't contribute anything. Right. But no one gave me that information. Yeah, right. no one provided that. Right. So I'm right. left confused yeah. and. Yeah, it, it, exactly. You know, and, mm -hmm. and the thing of it, thing of it is, is that you know you were saying you, you were saying when you watched the uh, new Netflix documentary on Malcolm mm -hmm. X that, uh, you know, we were in we're in a similar position. I'm gonna tell you, as a person who was involved in the struggle, yes, in the from the late '60s, early '70s, mm -hmm. I say we are in much worse. Mm -hmm. Condition. <laughs> I would say, I got you. Um, in, 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 ter in, ter in, in, in terms of some cre key ingredients that you need mm -hmm. to uh, develop a struggle, one being collective consciousness. Yes. Okay. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's just one. But I'll be honest with you, when we were organizing things like this, African Liberation Day in 1972, mm -hmm. and the uh, National Black Political Assembly, mm -hmm. if someone had told me, if someone had told me in 1972 that we would be seeing the things that we are seeing taking place in our community TNT. today, yes. mm -hmm. I would have said, you out of your mind. There yes. is no way that will happen. But it has happened because what we have to understand about our, about our enemies mm -hmm. is that they are constantly reconfiguring, recalibrating their systems of oppression. Facts. Okay, so... So the chattel slavery, people organized against chattel slavery, fought against it. Right. They said it's not going to work. Right. We don't believe in freedom for African people, but we got to do something. That's we right. can't continue on this. Right. So uh, they had uh, 12 years of uh, reconstruction mm -hmm. where the, the country had, a, had an opportunity to become mm -hmm. a multiracial democracy, yes. but the white supremacy this dynamic would have none of exactly. it. Right. And so they moved then into uh, Jim Crow segregation or what I call American apartheid with lynchings, mm -hmm. the destruction of mm -hmm. all of uh, the black economic yes. uh, development that we had in places like uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And so then we had to go through that. Mm -hmm. And so people rose up, fought against that. Right. And we said, man, now we got these rights. Right. And what do they do? They recalibrate. So, right. They say we'll come up with something else. Something different. And right. so we, we, we're going to flood the community with drugs. Mm -hmm. We're going to flood the community with welfare. That's right. Remove the black male from the home. 
and uh, we we going we going to move jobs out of the country so that black males that are working in decent jobs mm -hmm. in urban centers are no longer employed. Right. Keep and, and, and 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 what you create is chaos. Right. The, the type of violence that you know the sisters talking about, you know, like twenty seven year old Kendall Crank riding down North Tryon Street. Mm -hmm. Two groups of fools shooting at each other. Right. She's on the way to nursing school, mm. shot in the head and killed. Ridiculous. And I mean, this is what we're dealing with. Mm. But in terms of what my sister was saying about self-love, see, that's one of the reasons why uh, Kuja Chakalia self-determination is yeah. what? That's to what define ourselves, <laughs> make ourselves, create right. for ourselves. And uh, speak for ourselves. That's and, number two, y'all. And, and of course, <laughs> and of course, think right. and of course, think for ourselves. Yes. See, that's part of the process of reclaiming. Yes. You know, I always say that that uh, we once walked the earth as free, proud, productive, prosperous, and powerful people. That's right. For the past five hundred plus years, we we got taken out of our development. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, and. The objective has to be not just to get some laws passed, not just to vote anybody in the office. I don't care if you vote another Obama in the office. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The objective right. has to be to get back to mm -hmm. what we once were. Yes. That's right. Free, proud, productive, prosperous, and powerful people. Right. And the process for how that comes about, Kwanzaa is certainly part of that process, mm -hmm. but there has to be, we have to be active at the same time. We That's just right. can't go to events and walk away proud and feeling good about ourselves, and then nothing and then takes that's place. That. That's right. 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 That's right. right. And, I, and, and, and I absolutely agree. I believe that um, with, and, and with, and with, with regards to the events, I believe that follow-up is very important. I believe that extremely important. Um, when we did the um, New York Be the Change You Want to See event, yes. a follow-up was extremely important. We did right. three days. Mm -hmm. We brought out a panel the first day to speak to the people. The second day, we did four cities loving on our people. Mm -hmm. Going back to It Takes a Village, knocking on our people's doors and saying, what can I do to be of service to you today? Right. And um, the third day, we brought out Dr. Umar. Right. Um, but that second day, what we call the Day of Love, the follow-up was it's still happening today, every right. two weeks. Right. And that was really in, important to us at Blue Magic Entertainment Group is to not just say we want to be here in front of you and, and talk to you and right. have this conversation, but we want to give you uh, tools, skills, knowledge, um, solutions right. that um, you can follow through with, and we want to help you follow through with that. Right. Our people have a tendency of saying, um, I don't know what to do. You know, I don't want to know what to do. So we want to give you mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. solutions and those tools and mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. And then now what are you going to say? You know, right. so it it takes a lot. And education is, is definitely a part of it. Um, this is why I homeschool. You know, right. I pulled my, a lot of people do. I yeah. pulled my child, but yes. our community, I just read recently, uh, it's it's rising. Right. The homeschool is rising mm -hmm. um, in our community, amongst our people, and I think right. it's a great thing. Although parents must realize that we are the primary educators. We should be teaching our children from when they're even in the, in the womb. womb. Right. In the womb. That's right. You know? So we, uh, uh, public schools is uh, secondary, yes. you know? I've had my daughter go to school and teach the teacher, you mm -hmm. know, stuff. Gotcha. You know, she has got suspended because she said Christopher Ooh. Columbus didn't discover America, <laughs> you know, and told the truth. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the things that, you know, we have to teach our children about us. Is mm -hmm. You know, we have here in, what, North Carolina, where they're yes. fighting about African-American histories in the schools. Mm -hmm. And I'm That's so confused crazy. as why we're right. fighting exactly. this. That is our job to teach our children about our history. And not only that, it's American history, too. That's right. So I, I wouldn't understand why. What's the argument? Right. Mm -hmm. you get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But this is a policy, they said, that they've had for... 30 years. Well, oh, you know, why, why yeah. don't they want you to know your history? Because, right. because his, that, that, history is the element of power. Right. That's That'll right. lead you right back to Umoja. <laughs> right. Exactly. And they don't want you to go there. That's right. Exactly. They make a Brother lot of Barack, money off uh, of Barack. us having this type of mindset, which is produced by their miseducational system. It's, yes. It's funny how Kujalia talks about defining yourself, naming yourself. Uh, creating for yourself. for yourself, right? And these are the very things that produce the economic systems, the mm -hmm. wealth. For, right. But for them, 
Like, like, we're not doing it for ourselves. We need to do we it for us. It right. <laughs> so one thing a cultural revolution, a cultural change mm -hmm. will bring about mm -hmm. is us returning back to our Afrocentric ways. Mm -hmm. And now we were hungry to find out how we built the, the prosperous kingdoms that we had in the past. So it's important for you talking about educating the household. Every household has to take that journey. That's the right. for journey, if you can call it that. Yes. You have to take that journey where you're trying to find out how we create, first of all, what we created, mm -hmm. what we contributed to society, which yes. is great information that you'll discover about yourself yes. and your people, the DNA that resides in you. And then you have to find out how they did that. Right. Once you find out the how, now you can bring back to that, that to today's time that's and right. then start to build. And Absolutely. that's because we're talking about people saying, I don't know. Right. The answers are there. Mm -hmm. It's just, are you willing to go into the history books? Are you willing to do the research to find right. out? Mm -hmm. right. And that's one thing we have at that Ubuntu class. Is we talk yeah. about gotcha. knowledge itself. And we gotcha. talk about the African mm -hmm. strategies and tactics used yes. to produce the wealth. And also what you can do behind enemy lines right. to build that same type of, 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 of prosperity. Sure. But this time with protection. Right. So I think in the 60s and the 70s, there were some lessons that we can learn from building behind enemy lines. Yes. And we can strengthen what we, we can protect what we build. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to do any of that. Right. You're not going to love yourself. You're not going to define yourself correctly. You're not going to organize correctly, unify without oh, that knowledge of self. That's right. And that's right. taking that out of the school. That's Absolutely. Right. Right. And, I, and I think that's why it's important for us to look forward to building our own schools mm -hmm. with our own curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that. In, in regards to Dr. Omar, he does, he bought two buildings. Bought two buildings. In Wilmington, okay. Delaware. Let's, Great. let's take down that. Great. You know, he did do that and he's needing assistance with, right. um, uh, financially to mm -hmm. do the cleaning up and, and stuff like please that. Please support as well. that brother. Please support Please. That brother. So. Whatever you do, if you don't do anything else, please support that man. Mm -hmm. Or else I'll we're going to have to come find you. I'll say this. <laughs> a school might seem like a big project. Right. Not everyone has the thousands of dollars to, to, to build a school. Yes. But you can buy the books. That's yes. Right. You can get yes, When yeah. We Ruled by Robin Walker with that's, a study guide. That's right. And you can host a study session with your children. Do that's it. one hour. Go through the questions, have reading right. assignments, uh -huh. and yes. they can get that knowledge. That's yes. right. While in the process of us building the schools, uh -huh. we have these programs going on in the home. We could bring school at home. That's exactly. right. My daughter That's just finished what that is. book. Boom. She just finished that book. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to move on to Ujima, Collective Work and Responsibility, mm. to build and maintain our own community together right. and make our brothers and sisters problems our problems mm -hmm. right. uh -huh. and to solve them together. Right. You know what? Oh, man. Hmm. I would I would like to say something <laughs> to that. Um, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan says mm -hmm. um, we will talk about religion when we're free. Mm -hmm. And I think that in regards to that principle, um, we put a lot of things before yes. that. And one of the things that we put before that is religion. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm a Muslim. I'm in the nation of Islam. Yes. But I I put my religion aside to build yes. for my people because I'm black before I'm anything. Absolutely. So I challenge everyone to do that today. Same Absolutely. Right. And going right. forward. Absolutely. But that, you know, we f we focus on the wrong things. We focus mm -hmm. on these fads, mm -hmm. you know, what I call fads. The new mad mm -hmm. is a fad. Um, instead of focusing on what we need to focus on. And I'm constantly saying it's okay, well, this happened, but we got other more important stuff to focus on. Right. You know? Right. Right. Brother Bradley, Sir? making our brothers and sisters' problems our problems so we can solve them together. Yeah, probably. Uh, there, are no, there are a number of examples of that, you know, yes. from, from our history. Of course, everyone knows uh, we just saw the uh, Hollywood version mm -hmm. of, of the great Harriet Tubman. Yes. Uh, the general, yes. the general, um, she made her brothers and sisters' problems her problems right. and did everything she could to solve them. Because basically, once she got to Philadelphia, she could have chilled out. That's right. She didn't have to go back. That's Absolutely. right. She didn't have to risk being That's killed because right. they had bounties on her head. That's right. Know, <laughs> they wanted to kill this That's sister, right. I mean, right. because uh, she was creating havoc. That's right. Uh, Vizi won the lottery mm -hmm. in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Won the lottery. Mm -hmm. Bought his freedom, mm -hmm. right. and could have just forgotten everything. everything right. That's right. Right, but what did he do? And it, and this brother's like in his fifties. He mm -hmm. says, "I'm gonna organize a rebellion. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna organize a rebellion." You know, I, we we uh, the white people kicked us out of our church, uh, out of their church. So we started our own church, the right. church that Dylan Roof went in and killed the uh, 
uh, nine uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, a few right. years ago, right. uh, same church. Right. Um, but he, but he knew that the masses of black people weren't in the church. That's mm -hmm. right. They were out. They were out working on the plantations. Mm -hmm. right. So he had to get brothers that spoke that language. So he went. He found a brother named Gullah Jack Pritchett, mm -hmm. who was uh, called a, a priest, uh, uh, Angolan priest. Mm -hmm. And so they started organizing what would have been the largest rebellion and probably would have. Would, would have dealt a severe blow to a child of slavery. Right. He made his brothers and sisters problems. Mm -hmm. His problems. Uh, there was a time when things happened, like uh, the lynching of Emmett Till, for example. Yes. That that affected the whole community. Right. That affected the whole community. Right. Uh, now, you know, and, and we think lynching has to be with a rope or whatever. L no, no, no. Lynching mm -hmm. simply means an extra an extrajudicial killing. Yes. That's right. And so we have Tamir Rice was lynched. That's right. Within two seconds. That's right. By the police in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Michael Brown Jr. was lynched. Trayvon Martin was lynched. That's right. Eric Garner. Eric Garner was lynched. Right. right. Selling supposedly selling. He wasn't even selling cigarettes on that particular day. Correct. Mm -hmm. He had just broken up a fight. Right. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he was killed. So so to a certain extent, one of the things, you know, Du Bois talked about in uh, The Souls of Black Folks, he identified at that time what he called a double consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, two warring ideals, two uh, unreconcilable differences uh, in one dark body whose just strength and determination keeps it from being torn apart. So right. what he identified was this consciousness that had creeped into uh, into our community. We were still African, yes, but we were becoming American or American Negroes yes. at the time. So he identified a double consciousness, and he said, "This is something that that, that we that we need to solve. If if, right. if 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 we can't be you know merge into a single consciousness, then right. we're gonna have a problem." So now right. when we look now when we look at our community today, uh, Du Bois' double consciousness could very well be a uh, quintuple consciousness. When you throw in, you throw in class, right, and then you throw in all them alphabets, l da 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 da. You throw all that stuff in, <laughs> and you may, and you, and you could have, you could have a quintuple consciousness. Yes. And but 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 class consciousness. Uh, you know the feminist movement that yes. was launched by quote unquote oh. liberal white supremacists who were actually, uh, you know, they were they were they were liberal feminists, but they were white supremacists. Right, right. Pulled a lot of our sisters away, and so, and so now a lot of us don't see that our brothers and sisters' problems are our problems right. because, you know, I'm up and out of there. You know, right. it hasn't does, happened to that me. Does, that doesn't affect me. Right. Right. But yes. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if it, if they can make Michael Jackson strip nude and take a picture of him, <laughs> you know, I mean, they can do it to anybody. Yes. Right. But, 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 but that mindset is set in. So a lot of us are more class, right. you know, we're more feminist, we're more whatever else mm -hmm. than, right. than we are. And, and, and we don't, and, and we don't see that. So, uh, I, I think that's part of rebuilding the family yes. because, you know, once we, once we recognize that, you know, what happens to one happens to all. Right, you know, when when I played on the uh, JV basketball team, we had this chant: "All for one, one for, for all." all. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. all for one, one one for all. Right, and, and so, um, so bas and, basically, once we go through this, we realize everything reverts back to Umoja. That's right. Well, they all, they, but they all pretty much. Yeah, they they're all inextricably linked because right. there, there's no Umoja. If if you're not thinking for yourself, right. if you're not speaking for yourself, right? right? There's no emoji uh, if we're not engaged in collective work. So yes, they are, they they are they are all inextricably linked yes. together. And um, but yes. certainly, yeah, if you remove one, you, the whole system fails. Right, and it can't it can't be successful. Right. And what I would like to add to what the brother said is that, you know, one thing that we have to remember is that we're not targeted individually. We're targeted as a collective. Yes. And that's really important yes. for us to understand yes. when dealing with, you know, mm. well, in the system of white supremacy. supremacy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And see, what's, when, and, and, and what the system of white supremacy has done, one, 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 one of its greatest advantages is this whole concept of Eurocentric individualism. Hmm. Right. Which has then produced these massive egos. Yes. That... Brothers and we, we, if 
I agree with Brother Marifa. Right. Or if he agrees with me, I think, like, oh, why is he doing this? Why is he why is he attacking me? It's not personal. It's not personal. Right. We pick up the phone and talk to one another. Is that yes. what we did? Mm -hmm. That's what we did. We pick yes. up the phone. We talk to one another. Yes. You you resolve you resolve your conflicts. But but this Eurocentric individualism it has a powerful grip on us. Yes. And that's what the the Cultural Revolution Montu says: a person is a person because they are people. people. Right. 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 And so I mean so that's that's part of the, the Sankofa process that, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 that's a critical necessity. Yes. L let me say this. Let me say this. Okay. Uh, one of the things that made the movement um, in the 60s and 70s uh, less difficult, I'm not saying it wasn't difficult, mm -hmm. less difficult was the fact that, you know, our minds were not so distorted and, and so, and they, 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 there were not so many things coming into our mind where, where our, our ideas and, and the things that were influencing us were all over the place. I mean, we could clearly focus on what we saw right. as a problem that affected most of us. And we dealt with it. But now, particularly with the advent of social media mm -hmm. and the, uh, the the dictatorship of the celebrity class, we want to know what every celebrity in the world is doing, you know. Yeah. All of that has had an impact on, and it's, it's a huge distraction. And, you know, I call uh, entertainment the opiate of the masses. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we, we, we just don't, it's, it's difficult to get people focused right. when there's so many things going in, in the minds of even our children. Mm -hmm. Yes. At, at two, three, four years old, you know, they are like. They're on the computer. They're on yeah. the computer and whatnot. <laughs> so uh, th this, that's part yeah. of the challenge. Yeah. That's part, yeah. 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 That's part yeah. of the challenge. And, and mm -hmm. uh, one, another example that I use is. When I talk about uh, NAMA, the uh, seminal African nationalist or the seminal, seminal African liberator, mm -hmm. seminal, seminal, uh, the African uh, unifier, his task in one sense, even though he had all of these different ethnic groups yes. had traveled down the Nile and settled in uh, Kemet, his task was so easier than ours in the sense that he could focus on Construction. Right. See, when we talk about ancient Kemet, most often we talk about the structures that they built. Right. But I think the most important construction was m molding all of those African ethnic groups into one people, the people of Kemet. Yes. See, what we have to do, we have to deconstruct the impact of white supremacy, the impact of 500 plus years of powerlessness, the, the impact of, of, of self-hatred, of, of individualism. And all all of those types of things, we have to deconstruct, yes, and then try to construct uh, an African centered personality. Yes, and the per the clo the person who came closest to doing that uh, in the in the last hundred years was Marcus Garvey. Right, he was the, right. he was the clo he you know that's that's why Amos mm -hmm. Wilson called him a master psychologist. Yes, because you know he was the closest. Okay, and then, then, then with, 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 within, within the confines of religion, mm -hmm. Honorable Elijah Muhammad right. did the same thing, you know, with, with, with the nation of Islam. Yes. So, you know, that's the task that we're up against. We, we got all of this garbage that's going in. That, that's why Karinka says, you know, we got to have a complete mental rupture. Absolutely. And how do you do that when you just, when the bombardment is constant? From all ends. 24 seven. See, like, we... This right, we we right here, mm -hmm. okay. Then you you got CNN out there. You got Charlemagne. You get into the Breakfast Club. You got you got you, you know you got. I'm just giving the. I, know, you I know, got you. I, I, I got just you. an example. <laughs> but see, but what we're saying here, right, is something that that all of those audiences need to hear. Right. And, 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 yes. And and and, and, see, yes. and, and that's that's the struggle that we're up against yes. because. You know, we do the same thing. We produce right. a podcast once a week, right? Right. And it's you know, it's our voices reaching a few thousand people, right? right. right. Versus the millions that, that they reach, that that they reach. Right. And I think you know, one of the reasons why I started this was because, you know, uh, I used to do this pretty much by myself at home, just in the closet, just yapping, mm -hmm. right? And I wound up putting that yap on. Uh, Spotify and 
all of that. But then I decided to say, you know what? I don't even. I, I'm dead all of that, and I just wound up erasing everything I had because it was it was cheap. I felt. Okay. You know, I didn't have the little music behind it. I didn't have, you know, all of that. So I got rid of that and said, you know what? I want to try to do something different. So once I started doing my little editing or what have you, mm -hmm. then I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to come back in the game. But I wanted to come back into it speaking a lot more conscious stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of other stuff before was, it was conscious, but it was coming from a, a street view. Okay. If you if you know what I mean, you know I'm I'm popping off. I'm saying what I want to say, mm -hmm. you know. And but it it was it was more on it was a conscious level, but it was a street level. Okay, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, now I said I wanted to do uh, more of a level of where I'd be able to reach people of all ages or what have you, not just focusing on street people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. So um, this is one of the reasons why I decided to get back into this. Right. And um, a lot of people, you know, who I spoke to told me, man, you don't want to be talking about all this, you know, conscious stuff, man. You need to talk about stuff like what you talked about, like what Charlemagne sometime and them talk about just nonsense at times. Mm -hmm. But it's really not it's really not worth it. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to move on to Ujima, uh Cooperative Economics. And then because uh, we're, we're, we're like 947 right now, we're going to I want to uh, matter of fact, no, let's go to Nia. Let's go to Nia, which is purpose. Mm. Let's move there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we could quickly go to Kaumba and then Imani. So I'm going to start with you, sister, on Nia, which is purpose. Mm -hmm. Give me your take on uh, making our collective vocation and building and development of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. Give me your take on that. Mm. Mm. Brother, that's a that's that's a that's a whole bunch. Right. If, if we're, <laughs> we're gonna chop it down though, because we got to do a part two. We're gonna do a part two to this. I promise you, with the same people, same same people here. So don't worry about it. Mm. Whew, I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna have to weigh on that because I like to think before I speak. So yes, well, we're gonna pass it on to one of the brothers and okay, I, 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 I want because, my riffle. Uh, yeah, see, go ahead, my brother. When we, uh, when, we when we organized the Kwanzaa celebration yes. this year, yes, uh, you know we we invited the League of Intelligence and and they put on a, a dynamic program for us. Yes, but their program was focused on Nia. Nia. So mm -hmm. let's let him have this one. Go ahead, my brother. You got the floor. <laughs> Look at that. Brother. Let's let him have this because he just he's, he's fresh out of it. <laughs> yeah, Nia, Nia, when you said it, I was like, yo, that's, yeah. that's, that resonates. Um, you, you read part of it talking about making your collective vocation. Yes. Making that your collective vocation, meaning that's your that's your that's mission. Big, right. That's your purpose. Right. Um, collective meaning group. And that's our number one priority. Yes. To fulfill our purpose. And the purpose that Dr. Corrine is talking about in that particular principle is to restore our people back to our traditional right. greatness. Right. Greatness. And that's what we were prior to 1619. Yes. And it doesn't matter where you pick up before 1619. You're going right. to find us in prosperity. Yes. You're going to find us on point. Our family institutions are on point. Our political governance uh, institutions are on point. Right. Economically, we're thriving. Free, proud, and productive people, Elder Bradley said. Yes. So any time before that. So now this is asking you, and I'm not even asking, it's requiring you yes. to make the restoration back to that mm. your number one priority. Yes. Nothing else matters but that right there. Absolutely. And so you have to make a transition. He, he was listing and itemizing the things that distract you. You have to cancel that out. Right. And then apply the power that you've been given of concentration on this one particular mission. Right. And as you do that, you'll start to see the fruit of that. Right. And more people will get involved. Elder Bradley also mentioned the critical mass. So you right. don't even need everybody to get involved. That's right. right. You get right. them few key people. Mm -hmm. Just with enough. You. That's right. And see, purpose is important. Mm -hmm. It's what gives you meaning. Right. Anytime you create something, you give something purpose. You give something right. meaning. Right. And so for us to have purpose is important. Right. And so back in the days in, 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 in Kemet, we had a purpose. It was to create beauty and harmony in the world. Right. And that was our purpose. And it was also to destroy Isfet. Right. So you destroy all evil, anything that comes against that first purpose. Mm -hmm. But then this particular purpose, mm -hmm. the Naguza Saba's talking about, right. comes about because prior to 1619, we were prosperous. And then the great Ma'afa came, the African Holocaust, and we fell from that. Right. So now our new purpose is what it's talking about, yes. to restore our people. Mm -hmm. So any, if you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. in this particular society, in mm -hmm. this world, mm -hmm. it's something in connection with 
restoring our people. That's and there's right. a, several different areas you can get involved in to help us get back to where we need to be. That's Economics. Right. That's, that's right. Health. Right. Mm -hmm. Education, that's right. right. Uh, housing, whatever. Right. There's so many different. We need help in all areas. That's right. right. So if you're trying right. to find, what am I supposed to be doing? What do I do with my life? Right. Start with the Naguzu Saba uh, Nia principle. Yes. To restore our people back to the tradition of greatness. Mm -hmm. Y'all about to give me hype, so if you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go. We go. We gonna go to Kumba. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I definitely agree with you, brother. We, we we don't need the masses. Um, no, right. I've read that twenty percent is fine. Right. And just like. The fish, mm -hmm. the yes. rest will follow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to move on to, well, we got like, oh, God, we got Keep less. Keep pushing, are we good? All right, yeah. how about this? <laughs> Kaumba, creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, to do always as much as we can mm -hmm. in the way that we can mm -hmm. in order to leave our community more ben beautiful and beneficial mm -hmm. than when we inherited it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'll speak on that, my sister. I would say that speaks to me a lot. Um, I've been a community activist for 15 years, and that yes. has always been my thing. Um, I always said that um, I don't want my grandchildren to deal with what my grandparents and my parents and mm -hmm. I do. So I, I need to put forth whatever I can yes. um, by way of the ancestors, by way of God, to make sure that I am a positive, contributing solution mm -hmm. to that um to that so yes wow that definitely speaks to me a yes. lot it speaks yes. to me a lot yes all right my brother we're gonna leave this to the to the man iman mm -hmm. faith that's a big one to that's believe with all of our heart in our people, in our people, mm. our parents, mm -hmm. our teachers, mm -hmm. our leaders, mm -hmm. and the righteousness mm -hmm. and victory of our struggle. And victory of our struggle. Right. Right. That's powerful. Dr. Karenga says that uh, Imani is the glue mm. that holds the entire Nguza Saba together. Yes, it because does. if if you don't have Faith. If you don't believe we can unify, right. we're not going to unify, right. right? I mean, if you don't, if you don't believe we can, you know, practice self determination and you know, cooperative economics, uh, yes. supporting black businesses, none of, none of those things are, are going to happen. Yes. Um, he quotes uh, the great educator Mary McLeod Bethune, who said, "Without faith, nothing is possible. Mm. With it, right. nothing is impossible." Right. And so, you know, we have to believe particularly in the righteousness mm -hmm. and victory of our struggle. Mm -hmm. We have to believe that that it that it is righteous for us as African people to once again walk the earth as free, proud, productive, prosperous, and powerful people. Mm -hmm. We did this for thousands of years. The Ma'afa is, you know, depending on where you want to begin, if you want to begin with um right. with Prince Henry the Navigator, if you mm -hmm. want to begin in, you know, in, four, in the 1440s, 1442, mm -hmm. 1444, mm -hmm. or the uh, results of the disaster of 1492, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> when, the, the, when the, the, bar, the barbarian uh, Columbus landed, mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, in, 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 in this part of the, of the planet, and yes. the subsequent loss. You know, it, a study was released recently mm -hmm. that said between 1492, when Columbus landed, and 1600, right. Mm -hmm. right. 54 million people died as a result mm -hmm. of the European invasion of this hemisphere. Mm -hmm. 54 million. million. Biggest terrorist 54, on the planet. It, look, in 108 years. In, 100, in 108 years. So these are the monsters mm -hmm. that we're up against. That's right. But listen, our people... Our whole history right. is defying their logic or illogic. Mm -hmm. We weren't supposed to ever come out of chattel slavery. That's right. Mm -hmm. none, yeah, none of the things that we have done. That's right. We we, uh, we were supposed to be able to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. Of course, Marcus Garvey. I'm paraphrasing. He didn't mm -hmm. say these exact words, but I had to, I had to reconfigure them to make them work. Mm -hmm. What African people have done. African people can do. That's right. We can we can do these things, but 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 we can't make the project so big. We can't try to build 
the Great Pyramid before we build a step pyramid. Mm -hmm. gotcha. there, there's a process. And so right now, just like you said, man, I'm in the closet. I'm, you know, I'm doing all this kind of stuff and whatnot. So you came out of the closet and whatnot and not out of the closet. Like yeah, that, right. Yeah, let's let's correct that. Let's pause. So, <laughs> let's correct that. You, you might want to delete that when you do the, when you do the, uh, edit. Oh, no, no. We're correcting that right now. <laughs> right. right. But anyway, but anyway, so, so, so what we have in the absence of a mass movement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have all of these Harriet Tubman's. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what you have. Okay. We can't stop doing what we're doing yes. just because there is no mass movement. That's mm -hmm. right. Right? This sister's saving 5, 10, 15, or 20. Brother Marif is saving 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right, right. You're doing the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we have the Wisdom Jazars, Reggie Singletons. We That's have... Nice. Uh, you know, the local organizing committee at a million yes. man march, they're walking around picking up paper. Yes. Because Francis Cress Wilson said, don't throw trash down in our communities. That's right. It wasn't, all of these things matter. Yes, you right. got BJ, all, BJ all, in them as well. Yeah, all, mm -hmm. exactly. All, all of yeah. these things matter. Mm -hmm. right. And, and, and if, if all of us keep striving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then, you know, we can once again build a movement. And this time we can achieve total liberation and empowerment. Yes. Right. And, you know, not just, have some laws on the books that they can just rewrite or not Take enforce. Away. Exactly. Right. And I say that all the time. It's just mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, oh, I admire you. I appreciate everything you do. But listen, just do your part. Do your part. Yes. You don't have to do it like me. Yes. You know, you don't have to do it like Reza Islam mm -hmm. or, or Minister Farrakhan. Right, right, do right. it like you. Like you know, we've we all been given a gift um, to help our people in some form of fashion. Mm -hmm. right. Just do your part. Do your right. part. That's right. all it takes. Do your part. Yes. Absolutely. And um, I, I want to thank all of you for being here. And what we're going to do is we're going to offer some last comments. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start We're going to start with Marifi first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say as a final comment, I I'm going to echo what Aurora just said as far as do your part. And I'll link it with Nia. Yes. Your purpose. Mm -hmm. Do your part. Find a way to contribute um, to the restoration of our communities. Yes. And do your part. That's right. what I would say. Okay. I would say take the time to love on yourself. Figure exactly. yourself out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you were made in a beautiful way, in a beautiful light. And mm -hmm. once you can accept who you are, what you are, and every beautiful thing that you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then you'll be able to see everything else differently and so much better, I promise you. Right. All right, Brother Bradley. Yes. Uh there is there's currently a massive struggle for clarity versus all of the confusion that we see taking place across the entire spectrum. Okay, uh, the chaos right now that the coronavirus is, is is causing and whatnot. So it's easily be, to become distracted by you know Donald Trump in the White House, all of these types of things that are going. We have to stay focused right. on what we need to do, right. and that is. Engaging in the struggle mm -hmm. in any way we can for the liberation and empowerment of African people so we will once again walk the earth as free, proud, productive, prosperous, and powerful people. Mm. Yes. Come on now, Absolutely. brother. Good teacher. You know what? There's got to be a part two to this. We can't we can't just leave on this note, <laughs> I but I mean. I was going by quick. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's 959. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody that made this possible. This is Brother Ben Ra, keeping it 100. Please tune in. Come back. Uh, we're going to have another show coming tell, up. Tell, tell people how they can uh, reach this. Oh, yeah. They, you, you, you come to Channel 13, Channel 13 Square Media. That's all you got to do. Channel 13 Square Media, you get on Facebook, type that in the search, and when you get on the search, just click on the link, and Channel 13 is right there. There's a host of other shows that are also on this network, on the Square Media Network. Keeping it 100 is one of those shows out of many that are on this network, and they're all great platforms, so I want everybody to tune in. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm sleepy. I just came from work. <laughs> but this was, a, this was, a, this was fire. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a part two to this, I promise all of you, because I know you're going to be asking about it, okay? Mm -hmm. This is Brother Ben Ra. I want to thank my guests. Good night. Thank you for having me. Be before Holier. Yes. Jeez. Yes, indeed. Oh man, we got to just quick, man. we got to do this again. <laughs> quick, man. Like, I mean, there's a lot I wanted you know, to say, but I wanted to get you know, everybody in. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, gotta yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Gotta you know, be. Like to 